Today, inshaAllah ta'ala, we'll do a interesting list that Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah compiled. And it is the list of the potential ways that our sins can be forgiven. Now we know that the default, uh, which is in the Quran very explicitly, is that whoever does an evil deed, he shall be punished because of it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed multiple ways to get out of this punishment. Some of them are in our hands. Some of them Allah Azza wa allowed other people to do on our behalves. So Shaykh al ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions that he has extracted from the Quran and Sunnah 10 mechanisms or 10 ways that we can have our sins forgiven without getting to the ultimate punishment. Of course, the ultimate punishment is Nauru Jahannam, we seek Allah's refuge. Some of these ways are better than others. They're not all the same as we shall see. The first two are obviously, everybody should know, Tawbah and Istighfar. Tawbah number one, number two, Istighfar. Now Tawbah and Istighfar can be also put together, but in reality they're different in that Tawbah is broader than Istighfar. Tawbah is the act of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istighfar is the act of seeking forgiveness. So Tawbah is broader. Feeling regret is Tawbah. Having a regret of why I committed the sin, this is the essence of Tawbah. Istighfar is to ask Allah for forgiveness. And you are all aware, as our Prophet said, whoever really repents, it is as if he has never committed the sin. And he said, I ask Allah for istighfar more than 100 times a day. So number one and number two, tawbah and istighfar. And this is the default. And this is the most important. And this is the most effective. And this is also in our hands. So tawbah and istighfar, we do it. And it is guaranteed result. As Allah says in the Quran, Allah shall forgive all of your sins. If your tawbah is correct, your sins are forgiven. Given. Number three, what else forgives our sins, causes our sins to dissolve away? <inaudible> Doing good deeds in and of themselves causes bad deeds to go away. So frequently doing good deeds and repeating good deeds, and especially the ones that the Prophet mentioned, that when you do them regularly, the sins between them dissolve away. So he said, you are burning in your sins, you are burning in your sins. Then when you pray, they are washed away. Then you are burning in your sins, you are burning in your sins, then you pray, you, they are washed away. And he went over all five daily salawat. And in the famous hadith, he asked the Sahaba, what do you think of a person who takes a bath five times a day? So they didn't understand where he's in. He goes, Ya Rasulullah, this person is going to be absolutely spick and span clean. He said, this is the example of the salah. So, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ And of course, in the famous incident where the man confessed that, Ya Rasulullah, you know, I was flirting with a lady and I kissed her. I need to have the, the had implied against me. And the Prophet was silent. Then they all prayed jama'ah together. Then he said to the man, did you not pray jama'ah with us? Didn't you walk to the masjid? Did you do wudu? Didn't you have all the... He goes, yes, I did. He goes, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ This is your tawbah. You came, you were repentant, you asked istighfar. Now you did these good deeds. So doing good deeds in and of themselves causes bad deeds to go away. And especially as we said, those that are linked with the forgiveness of sins, for example, Ramadan to one Ramadan shall make a kafara of all the sins in between. Hajj to Hajj, Umrah to Umrah shall forgive all of the sins. Doing wudu causes the sins to fall. But any good deed, so when we commit a sin, we follow it up with a good deed. This is point number three. So one tawbah, two istighfar, three is a good deed. Four is not in our hands. It is the shafa'a of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for his ummah and his istighfar for his ummah. And all that he has done to ask Allah to forgive his ummah. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, hadith is authentic in Abu Dawud and others, your deeds are presented to me on Monday and on Thursday. And if I find good, I thank Allah for my ummah. If I find other than this, I ask Allah's istighfar. And it is authentically narrated that in tahajjud, he would ask Allah to forgive the sins of his ummah. And we know for a fact that every prophet is given one special dua that is answered. And every prophet used it for himself, for some good thing that he wanted. And our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he kept it until the day of judgment. And he's going to use it for his ummah as the shafa'a. This is the shafa'a and the dua and the istighfar of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, we cannot, you know, ask him in this world, but on qiyamah, we can directly ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam at anything that's of course allowed in the same lifespan. But the real point is that Allah azza wa jal is the one who shall choose. And Allah azza wa jal will be the one who will decide who shall get the shafa'a of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And that's why after every adhan, we should make the dua, Allahumma rabbadi da'wad tamma because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever does this sincerely, my shafa'a will be obligatory for him on the day of judgment. This is category number four. 
Category five is the dua of the believers for you, for forgiveness, right? So anybody, anytime somebody says, may Allah يعني, have mercy and forgive you, or Salat al janaza or after you've gone, people remember you and say, may Allah forgive me, he was such a righteous man. And this shall forgive your sins too. Is this in your hands? Who is remembered and asked forgiveness for? The one who impacts the most people, the one who touches the hearts of most people, the one whose akhlaq and whose mannerisms people remember. So when we think of those who have moved on, immediately the ones we think of number one are the ones who impacted us the most, the ones who helped us the most, the ones whose akhlaq, the ones whose benefit. So even though category five is not in our hands, indirectly we can plant the seeds for them. How so? By doing good deeds, being generous being kind, being compassionate, asking about other people so that we leave the largest legacy, so that the maximum number of people make istighfar for us. And our Prophet wasallam said, of the duas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reject is the dua of the brother, brother meaning Muslim brother, for his Muslim brother when he doesn't know about it, right? Somebody does not know and you raise your hands and you say, Ya Allah, brother Ahmed was so good to me. He gave me the loan. I needed that loan. Ya Allah, bless him with more. Ya Allah, forgive his sins. You make that dua from your heart, Allah Azza wa Jal shall accept it. And this is, by the way, a neglected sunnah. We talked about this many times. What do you lose, dear brothers, by making dua for others? And you know the angel will say, May you get the same. What do you lose by making dua for people? How stingy can we be that we don't even make dua for people, knowing that we will get exactly what we ask for others? Also, our Prophet said, Never do three rows of people ask for somebody's janazah maghfira, except that Allah forgives them. So, three rows means a lot of people come. Why would a lot of people come to your janazah? Why would they come when you have impacted them once again? So the more the people that come to the janazah, the more the chances are that again, the sins are forgiven. Number six, following the dua of the believers. Number six is after you've gone, the gifting of the good deeds of the believers to you. This is different than dua. Gifting of the good deed, which is much more rare. Who's going to gift you a hajj and umrah? Who's going to gift you a thousand dollars after you've gone? That's very rare. And that's going to be the smallest group of people whom you genuinely impacted, right? Or again, benefited in some way or other. So when you give somebody a good deed and they are gone now, they're khalas, they've, they've, they're in the barzakh. In this dunya, you give them a good deed. This will cause their ranks to rise up and their sins to be forgiven. This is akin to equivalent to when you did a good deed in your life, it expunges your sins. When somebody does a good deed on your behalf after you've gone, this too shall cause your sins to be forgiven. But once again, who's going to gift you good deeds? What group of people is going to do it? Unless it's your own son or daughter and even if they are righteous and whatnot and you've raised them in that way, who is going to spend so much money and say, Ya Rab, this reward I want for my father for so and so. And this is again the reality of impacting people. This is six now. Now, the last three are not in our hands. But we can try, right? The Prophet ﷺ shafa'a, we can try with what we do after Adhan, the, the people's dua and the people's gifting. Now the next three are not ones we want, but it's better than the alternative, which is adab of Jahannam. The next three ways to forgive our sins, we don't want them. We don't aim for them. But if they come, then we console ourselves that, okay, this is better than the alternative, which is adabu jahannam. And they are all of them, the pains and sufferings that we get at three different stages of our existence. Okay, so seven, eight, nine are three different stages of our existence. Seven is in this dunya, any pain, any suffering, any trauma that our Prophet ﷺ said, never does any anxiety or grief or worry or stress or pain afflict a believer, except that because because of it, what did he say? His sins are forgiven. Even the thorn that pricks you because of its sins are forgiven. So category seven is the pain and suffering. And pain doesn't just mean physical pain. It also means psychological pain. And sometimes psychological pain is much worse than physical pain. Sometimes anxiety and grief and stress, you would rather get a, a you know, hammer in your hand than to feel what you're feeling in the heart because of something going on. So pain, grief, stress, internal and external forgives the sins. But with one condition, we have ihtisab. We expect a to forgive our sins. We're connected with Allah. We realize, understand that this is happening because of a reason. Maybe we don't understand the reason, but we trust Allah. This is number seven. And by the way, from your birth, basically from your balagh, until the pangs of death, this is category seven. Until sakarat al-maut, everything that happens, even the sakarat al-maut, the very end of life, 
the pain and suffering that one feels is also a kafara for this dunya. So even though we don't want the strong sakarat, we don't want the pangs. When you find somebody like this, give him glad tidings. Sympathize with him. Say, inshallah, this pain, this suffering, it is meant to forgive all of the things you've done. So you should leave this world absolutely scot-free. That's number seven. Number eight, right after the angel of death comes, it begins. And that is the qabr, barzakh. Munkar, Nakir, Fitnatul Qabr, Adabul Qabr. And we definitely don't want that. We definitely do not want that. But there will be people who deserve punishment, but Allah in His mercy will punish them only in the Qabr and not in the Akhirah, not in Jahannam. We don't want, number seven is a part of life, we're gonna get it. We wanna minimize. Number eight, we don't want any of it. But it is better than the alternative. And the alternative is actual. So there will be people, you know, evil people, swinders, liars, you know, the ones who are always breaking up people's friendships, breaking up marriages, as the Prophet said. al qatat the one who's breaking up, you know, just the evil person going behind people's back and just malicious person. This adab al-qabr is promised for him, right? So adab al-qabr, now maybe he was praying, maybe he helped some orphans, whatnot. So Allah in His mercy might not take him to Jahannam, but he's going to be punished. So this is category eight, and that is the fitnatul qabr and the adab al-qabr. Category 9 is even more terrifying than category 8, and that is on the Day of Judgment. We don't want any major problems on the Day of Judgment. There will be people who will suffer on the Day of Judgment, the stress, and maybe even other issues of being denied water, we seek Allah's refuge from that, or being denied shade, or other things. There will even be people whose decree will be Jahannam, and they're dragged to Jahannam only to be saved at the last minute. That tension and stress of being told you're going to Jahannam and being dragged to Jahannam shall actually be a kafara for some evil that they've done and they deserved punishment. But still Allah at the very 11th hour will forgive them and that punishment that they had shall be the punishment that they deserved for what they did in this dunya. It is still better than entering Jahannam but we don't want anything of that. And Allah mentions in the Quran there's going to be a group of people هم من فزع يوم آمنون. They shall be safe from the stress of that day. هم من فزع يوم آمنون. We want to be that category. Still, category 9 is there and we seek Allah's refuge from it but it is better than the alternative. What is category 10? Category 10 is an all-encompassing generic maghfirah that Allah chooses to give without any cause whatsoever. And Allah is Malik and Allah is ala kulli shayin qadir and Allah is ghafur and ghafar and rahman and Allah chooses to do as He pleases. There will be people for reasons we don't know that Allah chooses to forgive without any of the nine. And this is Allah Azza wa Jal ala kulli shayin qadir, and this is not doing zulm to anybody. He knows what we do not know. As Allah says in the Quran, in Ya'lam Allah fi qulubikum khayra. If Allah knows there's something good in your heart, He shall give you better than what has been taken away. There are people, as the hadith says, Lam Ya'malu khayran qat. They never did a good deed in their lives. But eventually Allah Azza wa Jal shall forgive them despite the fact they didn't have any of the nine. That's not something we can bank on. That's not something we aim for that we skip over all of the nine. Still, we should realize that Allah is Ghafoor and Rahman. And if Allah wants to, and there shall be people who haven't deserved any of these, and yet still for reasons Allah knows, He shall forgive them. That is category 10. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins in this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be those who when they leave this world, they are not punished in the grave. They don't have the fitna to qabr, adab al qabr. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us security on the day of judgment and cause us to enter Jannah.